So man was made to be able to be tempted. That's the way God created man. He created man to be able to be tempted. Because if man cannot be tempted, it means God created a robot. That's the way man was made. First Corinthians 10, 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that he may be able to bear it. If man cannot desire something, then God is involved. If man doesn't have a desire, then it will mean that everything that happens, God is responsible. It is man's desire that exonerates God. And if man doesn't have a desire, then man is a robot. And man is not a robot. He has a will. Man is a free moral agent. Sin is the Greek word hamatia or hamatolos or hamaton. It means to go beside something. Sin. To go beside something. If it is God working in me, I can't go beside. You see, that would mean God is responsible for what I do. But the fact that I can go beside means God can be walking and I can leave God and go beside and do what I want to do without God interrupting me. How many of you are aware that when Adam, by Moses' vision, was taking the fruit of that tree to eat, God was watching. And God didn't say, ah! God didn't say, stop! God didn't say don't because God saw his desire. And God does not intercept your desire because long before the desire went out of control, he warned you about it. So having known that, if you set aside his warning and decide to nourish your desire, he won't stop you. That's why immediately Adam seen, the next thing was God. Adam, where are thou? He knew everything that was happening. But he was not behind it. He gave man the freedom to express his desire. He gave man the freedom to express his desire. That's why it says no temptation has taken you. But such as is common to man. And what I'm teaching here is important in understanding death. Very important because if you're going to understand that, you must get this background because I'm getting somewhere with it. Anthropinos, you know, anthropology is man. Anthropinos means it comes from man. There is no temptation that is not coming from man. Paul said, God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted above what you are able. What he means is that temptation is within man's desire he will not allow you to be tempted outside your desire so outside man's desire there is no temptation temptation is within the confines of man's desire meaning man can control it that's what he means you will not tempt you above what you are able because it is within your desire, which means you can control it because the desires are yours. That what Anthropinos is from man. First Corinthians 2.13, you see the use of it. It belongs to man. You also see the use of that word in First Corinthians 4.3. Is of man. It belongs to man. Is of man. There is no temptation that is not man's. So blaming the devil is temptation on his own. Acts 17, 25. Neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Neither is worship with men's hands and tropinos. Romans 6, 19. I speak after the manner of men. I speak after the manner of men and tropinos. James 3, 7. For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and has been tamed of mankind. They are tamed of mankind. All manner of beasts are tamed of mankind. So can we say that temptation is governed by man? Huh? 
from the analysis we have done, can we say that temptation is governed by man? First Peter 2.13 Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme. To every ordinance of man, submit yourselves. So question, where did sin come from? Where did death come from? So sin, as a product of man's desire, produced death. Who gave man the ability to desire? So that is where God's function stopped. God as God gave man the ability to desire. And when he gave man, he left man to decide what to do with his desire. So after God gave man that ability, God left man. So now man by his choice decides to either tame his desire or let his desire become uncontrollable and produce sin, which in turn produces death. It's called desire because it has governing principles. The day you take desire away from man, man stops being man. The day you take desire away from man, man stops being man. When you are coming to the service tonight without fasting and prayer, you chose the cloth you wanted to wear. Did anybody advise you? That was your desire. Whether you wore red or blue or black or purple or yellow or green, that was your desire. The day you take desire from man, man stops being man. You look at a lady, you like her. It's not God that tells you marry her. It's you who like her. And you desire her. So he said to her, hey, babes, what's up? And she says, who's your babes? He said, I'm sorry. What I was simply saying is my sister in Christ. <laughs> That's your desire. You try to express your desire, they rebuke you, you apologize. And still did it anyway in another form. Mom must always find a way. My sister in Christ. Are you not my sister in Christ? So because I call you babes, are you not babes? Okay, grandma. And then you start laughing together. And then you end up saying, babes, babes. And the whole thing relaxes and she's no more angry. You have walked your way around because of your desire. No, it's not a class on courtship. Let's get back to the scriptures. <laughs> so what makes man, man is desire. All right? 